What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Ooch, and of course, we're back with the homie Kai, and we are back again, once again, with another episode of the Full Power Podcast, where we talk about, of course, a lot of hot topics pertaining to Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super, Z, everything, even the super, 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 super hero movie that's coming out next year. And uh, yeah, sometimes we talk about some other anime as well, but yeah, it's primarily some Dragon Ball related topics. So if you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, uh, again, appreciate you guys for all the support and the love that you guys have been showing us here at this podcast. Um, so Kai, man, what is going on with you, sir? Uh, nothing special, nothing out of the ordinary. Still getting ready for that move, but... I'm actually really excited about this chapter because we saw some good stuff happening, some typical stuff happening. Don't really want to get into that aspect of it, but there's a lot of cool, a lot of cool ideas that can be thrown around now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I can tell you, I can tell you right now that uh, I'm once once you messaged me and you told me that, oh yeah, like this chapter was fire. I was like, okay. It, if Kai says that it was fire, then that means that I have nothing to worry about. And all of the fans and everybody on Twitter can calm down because I don't know if you saw, but people like the other day that went off of the leaked image <laughs> that I guess came from jump, the jump scans or whatever, they were just jumping the gun and they're already saying like, yo, Vegeta taking another L, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I did see and, that. Yeah. And so... Here's, here's your, for everyone that's listening, here's just another word of advice from your boys, okay? Stop just jumping the gun and listening to a lot of fans out there that really just love to just spew whatever it is that, you know, that, that's the first thing that they think of off of like a few leaked images, okay? Because... Yes, you. we can definitely pull from a lot of history in the past and how things are kind of very like cookie cutter and formulaic and a lot of times we can predict things before they even happen, but let's just not jump the gun fully off of just a few images, guys. Let's not do that because, of course, that misinformation will get spread and then everybody will just continue to meme on everything that's already happening. It's so much so to the point where you got Chris Sabat, the voice of Vegeta himself, literally making a tweet. Not even. He made he retweeted himself from like either last year or a few years ago when he said that he saw that Vegeta was trending and that when he goes to look and see why, he wasn't surprised as to exactly why it was, which it, of course he was insinuating that it was on some he gets boosted for a short amount of time and then holds another L ultimately, right? But when he quote retweeted himself, he literally said, instead of me writing the same thing, I figured I would just share what I had already said from years back. And I'm just like, wow, that's OD. Like I can't even, like that's messed up. You know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy. You got the voice actor, bro, out here on Twitter as well like sharing the same feelings and whatnot if that was actually the case but it turns out that's exactly what we're here to talk about of course this episode is gonna be primarily going over chapter 75 of dragon ball super and uh yeah let's you know let's i guess we're just gonna hop right into it so you wanna you wanna you wanna you wanna go over this like usual you wanna just point out some of the things that uh any, any any anything specific that you want to talk about first no i like i like the way we uh just kind of go you know in order because yeah. things just pop up on the fly and then we'll just take off with it you know you're we'll right just bump Absolutely. ideas off each other and then accidentally write a whole chapter so <laughs> yeah oh man okay all right so fair enough all right guys so here we go chapter 75 so of course this all this whole thing starts out with exactly where we left off vegeta is out here with his brand new gatorade form and he's literally like shocking the hell out of granola granola is like yo how is this dude this strong they're going back and forth a little bit not really because at first it starts off vegeta is like 
completely in his element. He he got him by the collar. He's just literally in his face, ready to get ready for a dose of my tough love. You know what I'm saying? And he, this dude, this 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 guy Vegeta in the in this in this new state. I gotta say. I'm a fan, okay? I will admit, I, I kind of got over the whole Super Saiyan 3 eyebrows thing already, and... <laughs> I'm, I'm like, working on it. I'm not there yet. Yeah. Like, I'm not... Like I said, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much on board with the form now just off of how Vegeta was acting, okay? Like, how he was coming across, and he was delivering his lines, his, his punches... You know, like all of his offense that, you know, we see in these first few pages, like Granola was just struggling super hard to get anything going. Vegeta's just really giving it to him. And even when Granola starts getting some hits in, Vegeta has this like new crazed look on his face. And he even says, the thing is, the hotter my battle soul burns, the stronger I grow. So essentially, this is like nothing new. This is not like we're seeing something completely like a new layer added really to like the Saiyan heritage and how, you know, they're they're all about their, uh, you know, the strong like the, the, the more they fight, the stronger they get. This is almost like it's a, that concept, but it's amplified to like 11 because I've never seen such a face on Vegeta. Not going to lie. And I, and I saw that and I was like, oh, hold on, my man. Like. He he's on like he's on that crack right now. Like he's he's going a little crazy. So he freaking headbutts Granola. Granola's going crashing through all these freaking buildings below where they're fighting at. Vegeta's kicking them through freaking cinder blocks, freaking no no three no three pigs, the chinny chin chin, none of that. None, none of these stories, all the whole the bricks are coming down. Okay, like all of that is is just is just not happening right now for granola granola just trying to hide recoup and he's like it's like he's an entirely different person and you know of course he's reviewing the whole entire situation and of course vegeta reveals like there are these beings called gods of destruction our universe has one and he's the one who taught me about this power right and of course granola don't know nothing about this because na naturally it would make sense for him not to know about the gods of destruction because he didn't even know the truth in 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 frieza being the reason or the ones that took out the sands and whatnot and what have you so so he's like kind of awestruck that you know this god apparently granted him the power but that's not what he said vegeta says and did i say that no this power is my own and our battle has awakened it for the first time yeah I thought I thought that was interesting for the first time. So that means like even he hasn't fully, you know, like witnessed that kind of form of his own. You know what I mean? Like that's the first time yeah. he had access to that full unlocked potential. And that, exactly, and that's the, and this is kind of like almost the theme of this chapter is like it's 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 full of surprises even even within the dialogue because you gotta acknowledge even things like that where. You you, you you take everything into consideration, like all the things that have led to this very moment, like all the battles and all the fights, all the training that they've gone through, all the freaking forms that they've gone through. I mean, pretty soon we're going to have Super Saiyan Skittles. All right, we're going to go through the freaking color of the rainbow oh out God. here. Okay, and I'm pretty sure, I mean, if people are, <laughs> if, if they're correct with the color scheme of what vegeta is currently in right now because obviously these chapters are black and white so we don't know until we see like color pages or cover uh pieces for like the the physical volumes when they release his hair could be purple right now for all Dude, we know and that that could be fire not that gonna would lie. be th like this man this no eyebrow looking ass that shit would <laughs> still be my favorite if they really get it you know the way people are predicting if he looks like that oh it's gonna look 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Freaking Super Saiyan spicy chili. You know what I'm saying? Got the purple Doritos bag out here. Yo, you need to here. stop. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I will find whatever. Listen, my man went from blue Gatorade diamond to the Super Saiyan spicy chili, son. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, so here we go. We're going on and, and Granola's trying to just understand like he's like i drew this power out it's like that's impossible like he's not trying to buy any of that he's not believing it 
And this is the next bit of interesting thing that I want to point out, right? Granola shoots a whole beam at Vegeta, and instead of dodging it or, ref or deflecting it, reflecting it, like any other combatant usually would in a Dragon Ball type fight, my man just stands there and he takes the entire blast and and granola's like what and vegeta's like ha good good nothing revs me up more so this dude is literally fueling off of the damage which is what will of course lead into later like very shortly thereafter into the chapter we we come to discover that this is to the t the exact opposite to what an ultra instinct form is okay ultra instinct acts on its own you know it's ducking and dodging not taking no kind of hits would have been perfect in the dodgeball movie when we're not hit, get, taking no balls Yo, all right this, none of that this way that he's acting you know this savage way this you know or, you know pr primal if you will right 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 this, you know very very ancient way of the sayings that he's acting right now all crazed up and everything like that and he said nothing revs me up more that's that's the that's the fucking walmart brand of goku blacks this pain will make me stronger <laughs> oh yeah that's your boy right there but you know keyword to the primal we're saving that for broly ladies and gentlemen we're saving well, that one for broly. i mean that's the thing though i mean he couldn't handle goku style now it looks like he's trying broly's yeah hey we'll, we'll get to that we'll get to that all right we'll, we'll get to that <laughs> Okay, we'll, we'll get to that. So, so of course, Vegeta's out here still applying hella off offense, even to the point where Granola whips out, like, some kind of energy shield, and Vegeta drop kicks him through the shield. Like, that, that part was sick. I'm not even gonna lie. But even a little backtrack a little bit. So, we do, speaking of, you know, the idea of what would we call this new form that Vegeta now has, right? And we have that answer. And I quote from Vegeta himself, Kakarot's body may have a mind of its own, but I'm all ego. In fact, go ahead and call this Ultra Ego. Kai, yes. what do you think about this name? Fuck that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a fan of the name. I'm a fan of the form. I'm not a fan of the name. Hell no. That was, that was some really stupid shit. <laughs> yeah. I uh I have to agree. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Not to not to halt any of the hype going into this chapter, but when I did read that, now funny enough, I did see Geekdom tweet like just nothing else, but all he said was ultra ego. And I and I saw that and I was like, what? And I just kept scrolling, right? I was like, I didn't I didn't make I didn't think anything of it, right? And here we are reading this chapter, chapter 75. And he says, call this ultra ego. Now, it could have, I, 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 I definitely have to say, this could have been called anything else a lot better. Could be a lot worse. But I think that what they were trying to do is that they were trying to really emphasize Vegeta's, like, new attitude with this form now. Like, even though he's really all about this destructive power and it's, it's nature and he's taking on hits and blows and whatnot and he's using that as almost like fuel to just power himself up even more to just be that much more destructive i get it it's almost as if like you could compare it to someone that was very egotistical right and i get that now it, it brings me to this point I feel like this might sound a lot better in Japanese. And I'm curious as to what it's originally called. Because again, things get you know translated and whatnot for us English readers to read. And just like with Ultra Instinct, Migate no Gokui, right? That sounds godlike, all right? I wonder what Ultra Ego would translate to or what is its Japanese counterpart name. And I'm wondering also if if they are paying attention, and I'm hoping that a lot of the Japanese readers, if you know, if if whatever it does, whatever it is in Japanese, if they don't like it, I'm hoping that they're vocal enough to where the name gets changed because this would not be the first time we've seen names change with forms in the past. And in case you forgot, let me remind you: Super Saiyan God. Super Saiyan was an actual term 
for a form in Dragon Ball Super. And shortly thereafter, it was all, all it was straight up changed to be known as Super Saiyan Blue. Let's which not is, forget the infamous yeah. upcoming movie. They're <laughs> super, absolutely super. trash with naming things. <laughs> super, super. Super, super, super. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah so it's let's let's not just put all the eggs in this freaking basket that's also holding these dragon balls which we will get to because there is something about the dragon balls that come up in this chapter all right so we have this new name ultra ego so of course vegeta continues on with his onslaught um now i forget this namekian's name do you remember his name this was the dude that was looking after granola no nah, i don't yeah, I, I, I completely forgot this dude's name, so forgive us on that. Um, but we we actually get to see him for the first time in whew, like a long, long time. Probably, probably since the beginning since, like, of this the arc. start, yeah. Yeah, like I, I low-key forgot about this guy, to be honest, right? So they show him for literally like four panels on one page. And for for the reason being that he from a distance can see the fight ensuing but the thing is he thinks that granola's fighting frieza right now of course what is a, a recent or latest dragon ball super chapter without there being the mention of frieza because it is almost inevitably gonna happen right that frieza is gonna come in at some point what what he'll do obviously don't know outside of fighting probably but we have to see right so granola says you aren't even frieza there's no way i'll lose to some third rate saiyan grunt right granola is out here throwing all the shade at vegeta right now and and then at this part this is again another interesting point that is is a highlight of this chapter right here is the is the dialogue between the two characters right so vegeta then after that says i have no idea what tales you've heard but our home planet vegeta wasn't wiped out by some enormous meteor strike it was all frieza's doing he destroyed planet vegeta himself and granola is like completely shocked almost in disbelief vegeta goes on to say the saiyan tribe is yet another push to the brink of extinction by frieza and granola's like I is that true and of course his uh his like eye thing his like little computer john that's hooked up to his uh his like telescope i, I what do you even call that thing like i have no idea what to call that on his face his monocle assist <laughs> okay we'll go with that so the monocle assist right so this this thing is saying that contradicts what you were told and so and and granola's like it doesn't even matter Yo, if you, you're telling the you truth you see him start sweating in there too like wait what? yeah yeah you see the sweat going right on that one panel and he like and this is like where granola's like in full denial mode like he's just trying not to hear it right now so he even like before he throws the next punch he's like it's no reason to call off my revenge against you saying Punch to the forehead again. Like I mentioned before, Vegeta just not trying to dodge nothing. He literally just takes the punch to the forehead. The blood is coming down on his face. And he goes, believe what you want, but I speak the truth. And don't think for a second that I want your pity. And of course, again, just kicks him off. Uh, kicks him like so, like, dude, like this is like on some, some kickball stuff now. We're playing all sorts of ball games right now with this fight kicks him back all the way to like this lookout tower that's uh somewhat nearby and this monocle of course says it appears that the saiyans were victims as well and yet and and then he go and then granola goes that doesn't change the fact that the saiyans killed my people and so then this this thing says and yet does not and yet it does not seem that these two were aware of that. So he's having a little back and forth with his own little, uh, you know, advice piece right there. And what Granola decides to do at this point onward is he just tosses it because he doesn't want to hear it no more. So from this point, I, we can confirm that even with this newfound knowledge, Granola is just so 
consumed by his objective that even with some you know new revelations some updates he doesn't want to even take into consideration any of this truth he doesn't want to hold off he doesn't want to stand by he doesn't want to hear them out fully he just wants to keep fighting he wants his revenge because this all he understands right now all he wants to accept is that the saiyans killed his people and that's that right so now his eye is revealed and we also we also uh are, are uh we also get confirmation that his eye is red so i don't know if that was previously confirmed in uh older chapters no i don't think it was okay right so we now know that today or yeah we, we now know that now right so the funny thing is you know I, we we have this new form that's called ultra ego but at this point it also seems like granola had, had had a little ego to him as well because as soon as he took that john off he was like now that i'm the strongest i don't need your support anymore right so i'm like oh okay got a little of uh, some contrast going on over here with these two guys fighting against each other and let's see here so some more dialogue happens they're just bantering at this point and granola lifts up the exact building he was just standing upon tries to throw it at vegeta vegeta literally just he kind of like catches it with one hand and just breaks it in half right and so then he questions him he goes what's this so willing to destroy this old city now which is a really great point because again granola right now he's just all ramped up and amped up and he's just not trying to to lose to this quote-unquote third rate third rate saying grunt as he put it and, and and this leads to our next point right that this next interesting point that i oh when i saw this i was like oh okay like i haven't seen we haven't seen this in a while right so granola's chucking hella city structures like the bricks the the little houses that was nearby he is just throwing all of them at vegeta vegeta's literally standing there just embracing it and next thing you know the dust settles and for the first time since dragon ball z we see the saiyan armor crack broken off and vegeta just removes it completely we see only the undersuit vegeta now shout outs to the majin days bro that's okay. my favorite look <laughs> and he got the purple john i hope yeah all right well only one can hope so we have this 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 uh nostalgic look for vegeta right now and i'm just like bruh right this is od like this is this chapter is actually very like i already thought it was really really good but once i saw this i was like okay this this is fire like i told you <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so at this point well let's see we're about yeah we're a little bit more than halfway through this chapter at this rate so nearby we get a shot of his uh monocle as kai put it and uh we also noticed that a spaceship kind of just took it for itself we don't see who's who's piloting it just yet but they fly off right in a, in, in a rush kind of state so back to the fight they're going back and forth again trading blows except this time right it's all finally catching up to vegeta because he's he's taking the hits but he's showing you know some signs of some damage right like he's really hurt and he's feeling it and even so he's just trying to, to fight through it power through it and granola shoots out a beam and it, and this time vegeta dodges it instead of taking it right and of course granola takes notice of that and he's like are you hitting your limit now and vegeta's like it's unwise that a saiyan's combat prowess we live for battle so of course vegeta you know you could say or you could argue that he's putting up a front for the sake of this fight because you know Vegeta's all about that pride. And especially with this ego state that he's in right now. I mean, dude, this is like pride, ego combined is like the worst combo for a character like Vegeta. Because this dude is just going to keep going until he literally probably can't go no more. Like, 
at it's all. It's like his own personal Powerpuff recipe for taking L's. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. So now, for the first time, we're seeing Goku for this chapter, right? So he's chilling by by a little river. He's trying to just recoup. He's trying to just literally recover. And also something that I'm not sure... I can't remember if I've seen this happen pro previous previously either is goku can heal himself now is that is that am i getting that right i mean he can but i mean the only time i've seen him heal anything was you know in non-canon movies so <laughs> unless vegeta taught him that shit off screen off paper i don't know listen like like, like to to your reference right those moments were literally about like sharing energy to like kind of boost themselves up and whatnot we saw that with with uh with with what with broly the broly the first one right where they all like pointed their arms out and yeah. they just gave whatever remains that they had left in the tank to goku but that was like pretty much the only form of healing i guess we saw, we, to. we saw a baby form of healing in the in the first cooler movie when he healed that bird okay yeah see i wanted to first say the cooler film but then i was like wait why why do i want to say the cooler film he went super saiyan and then he just and he just body cooler after that like what like he didn't and but yeah that's what it was it was the bird so yes goku loki has had a little bit of jesus powers okay but we haven't really seen it like kai said in any of these in these canon works he had it right? the first well wait no that wasn't the first time but he had it uh you know in gt when he was about to go up against omega and he was like yo i need this form back i need everyone form up a circle let's go he did the same thing <laughs> against baby that was you know like that was full heal right so but yeah th those we've never seen it in the actual series i don't think i, I definitely don't think yeah yeah i mean one one can assume that this is just kind of like a part of the ultra instinct move set you just come Man. equipped with self-healing i guess now you know vegeta out here trying to learn how to heal and he can't do it to himself goku's on the sideline like oh i mean i didn't learn it but i'll use it yeah same with destruction yeah. like he did you know 100 chapters ago whenever <laughs> yeah you know how these sayings go man like they they might be on their own paths like vegeta's clearly on the destructive path goku is clearly on the you know angelic instinctual path but they'd be barring from each other whenever they want facts you know that's just how the saiyans are literally as i once put it monkey see monkey, monkey do. do and and what are these two they're freaking monkeys literally as frieza would love to put these freaking monkeys right you know what i'm saying so here we go such a racist that fridge huh such a racist fridge <laughs> yo I, I, people people love to say uh, for the memes that freeze is such a racist but it's like but he let's is, not <laughs> but let's... no but like he actually is though well yeah he, for... he did the same thing with the namekians yeah i mean but is he then because like he just don't like anybody like yeah like... he's okay yeah maybe he's not racist he just hates everyone equally that's what I'm saying. Like he he's not really a racist because he just hates everybody equally. Like he he everybody Ex is beneath not, him. Except for the monkeys though. They they really hold a special place. Oh, of course. Of course they hold a, a, a special place because you know, you know like why? because when Frieza was a fucking baby ice cube, he heard stories about the legend and he shot his pants. Yeah, he shot his pants and to the point where he felt it necessary that he's like, "You know what?" I'm not trying to have these dudes around no more. Right. I'm going to just wipe them all out right now. And he was... That exact thing that he was scared of is exact... And he had every reason to be scared of because my man got washed <laughs> by two Saiyans, Goku and Trunks. So, speaking of getting washed, right? So, we're back to the fight. Vegeta's throwing out some beams. Or actually... Oh, no. Yeah. He, he he's, he's trying to throw some out granola he's got some in return granola literally taking all the blows now granola showing off how strong he is and through the through the smoking clouds 
My man got the sniper jaw now. He's looking like a Quincy. I know you don't want you haven't seen Bleach yet, but oh no! All, all those all those Bleach heads out there know what I'm talking about, right? We got the we we got that Okio, not the oh, freaking Okio, the Ishda. All right, the, the 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 folks over here with the Quincy's, they got their bow and arrows, but they don't really have the bow and arrow. They are the bow and arrow, right? And Vegeta's trying to power up because he's like, I'll have to end this now. He powers up. And he's got a humongous death ball looking ass thing coming up. Fact. And he goes, this will destroy anything it touches. Want to protect your precious planet? Then you'd better stop this yourself. And so Granola has not let his, his, his arrow down. Vegeta goes, oh, you're a brave one. Then this will be your doom. And Granola still standing there not afraid not scared for some reason the le the the left eye of his went red as well so apparently this dude these ceruleans these serial mother frickers they got they're out here their power-ups within their eyes shout out to the sharingan okay so we out here with some dojutsu in they're dragon out ball here with the great power-ups <laughs> yes sir <laughs> so then granola goes eat this now he's got two finger guns looks it, it, and he basically explodes the the attack that vegeta tried to throw at him it looks like it rumbles the entire planet because you can see it they have like a very 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 far shot of this entire blow and we see a lot of different perspectives like goku's a couple other characters um, the Namekian that, of course, was taking care of Granola at a time. Everybody's just, like, trying to brace this impact. And the dust, the dust settles. Vegeta is now seen on the floor. And he's like, damn it. Like, how did he? Granola's like, I have to thank you, Saiyan. You're responsible for drawing out this power of mine. Ha <laughs> ha! So the lines and everything just turns completely, right? And so now we finally get a glimpse at who took his monocle away in that ship and it was the heaters of course right so we're finally getting to see the heaters once again and i'm just like oh, okay what's the motive what are the what are their plans right now so to make a long story short these dudes were kind of contemplating like you know they they, they have hopes that granola and the saiyans kind of just tire themselves out because what they are really trying to do is distract them so that they can go ahead and find the Dragon Balls. And this is where the chapter ends. And the speculation and of course all of the discussions amongst all kind of content creators out there for Dragon Ball. And including ourselves start to happen. So here now, we go. That now hold up. Are we sure that they picked up the, the monocle? So I I believe that I, I feel uh, that's, that's how I that's how I read it. Because... I saw the spaceship or that little like you know like ship john yeah but it's a different ship i think the i think the dude the consciousness whatever that's talking through the monocle i think he was driving that ship even you know remotely or whatever but i don't think it was the i don't think it was the oh Hedra ship. yeah no you're right i'm looking back at it now yeah see i ooh, see, got i got i got i got mixed hard because the 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 it was the front of the ship that looked pretty similar, but now that I'm looking back at it, there is definitely some distinctions between the two. So, so yeah, it wasn't them that picked up the monocle. So yeah, you're right. It could have been that thing itself that was uh, that piloted that ship. That it actually could have been Granola. So who knows where he's going? No idea. But, but now we have the heaters with their revealed plan with a dragon radar at hand right so they're definitely going to find these dragon balls and they and the thing is they only have to find two let's I not forget that just gonna say that he said we're about to reach the first location but there's really only two so oh <laughs> no uh-huh that's crazy and so from the last line that this dude says i forget his name right but this is this is the guy that gives me the cell impression vibes right i feel like i look at his the way he is and just the way he talks to his people he just gives me cell vibes. Like, I just hope that he, he does sound similar to that when, if and when this ever does get um, 
you know, animated in the future. But he says those so-called Dragon Balls that grant any wish, right? So that line kind of indicates to us, the readers, that they also don't fully know the actuality of these specific Dragon Balls on this very planet. They don't know that it's not really any wish because if they do wish for whatever it is that they're trying to you know attain or achieve there's a price because they only have two dragon balls to find it's not like our our shenron right their 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 version of shenron got some limitations and and some costs that need to be you know had and whatnot right so which i i think is you know it, it, it's pretty interesting and it does add more lore overall to the you know the universe of dragon ball as we know it but i really do want to know that the the, the the actual question here is what the hell could he wish for um i got nothing right now it is it, i'm not gonna lie it is pretty it is pretty early on right yeah it is pretty early on but here's a, here's an idea right and i'm gonna and, and and i'm gonna go on a limb here and I'm gonna I'm gonna say I feel like nobody has had this prediction yet. And honestly, I wouldn't know because I haven't even I haven't even watched any any of Geekdom's new videos yet. I haven't seen any other theories floating around and about. But here's my thought. Okay. So if heater if these heaters are aware to a degree of everything that's kind of going on right now, they de they basically deceived Granola into fighting the saiyans right we keep we, we constantly keep hearing about frieza we're always waiting on this dude what if his wish is to essentially take control over frieza i don't know about that it's a stretch don't get me wrong it's definitely a stretch but i'm just trying to put i'm just trying to piece all of these these pieces i'm trying to yeah i'm trying to piece all these you know all this puzzle that, that, that's like scattered across this table right now because we have what we have as far as all this fighting and you know the things that we have learned through uh these two paths you know goku took one path Vegeta took another we learned a lot with this we you know with just the, how the actual dragon balls and the mechians like like how that all works like all that functions right and throughout all that, we learned, you know, a little bit about Granola and his objectives, his motives, and what he knows and the lack thereof of what he knows, right? And, like, you take all of that and then you throw in Frieza's name constantly. He has been, like, a theme. The, he has been the constant in throughout all of this so far in this arc. And we have no idea how much longer this could realistically go for i mean one can assume that they'll probably try to wrap things up right around the time the movie comes out which is at some point next year but again we don't even know exactly when that is going to happen so this was august chapter we still got september's october's november's december's we still got four more for this year and a lot can happen within these chapters being that they're monthlies and they're around like 45 on average pages. So I'm just thinking like, what could, what, hey, what could they wish for outside of like the, the typical, like, I want to be the strongest in the universe. No, I want to be the strongest in the universe. What if they ended up just doing, you know, a version of that. And since these people know Frieza as like the be all end all, and they're not aware of what actually is out there and the fact that this man frieza has held a, a couple l's already right what if they're that is exactly what it is that they're trying to do because this guy he's just trying to play it smart he's like oh like why would i need to get involved what don't i just, what if i just had frieza work for me imagine that i'm sure no one would 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 would, would, would think or predict that i just feel like i feel like it's unrealistic just because frieza's too big I can agree with that. Like too big of a character, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, certainly not, not as a character, because we know he was all trying to wish to get bigger. Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
That's definitely true. You want what he it was like five inches? He five said? centimeters. Oh, centimeters, centimeters. Okay. That's that's so crazy. <laughs> centimeters. Because you know, any more would be too noticeable. True. True. Yeah. So, so that's my thought with the whole wish idea, right? Because outside of that, I mean, I really don't know what else. Like I said, they could wish for outside of for whomever, if it was himself or if it was another fighter that he wanted to be the strongest or stronger than the strongest in the universe, right? Like, because that that also is like the whole arc, I guess. Like theme, one of the themes, underlying themes here is you know is like you know what do you what do you get when you put up someone that's the quote-unquote strongest in the universe against a guy like goku a guy like vegeta you know see but that's where that's where i get confused because it's like his lifespan got cut for him to obtain that level of you know power and maintain it but strongest oh you know what that's that's something we kind of grazed over um I think it was last chapter actually, but uh, Vegeta mentioned that, uh, you know, strongest, second strongest, whatever, those are, you know, those are mere titles. They only represent a moment in history. The, once that moment's passed, it don't mean shit. Literally right. anything can happen. Anyone can pull up and beat your ass. Simple. So it's like, if, oh God, dear God, if Ultra Ego really pulls up. <laughs> <laughs> I had to struggle for that. If Ultra Ego really pulls up and, you know, ends up being stronger, does that wish automatically cut another year off his lifespan and boom, left eye unlocked? Oh, I see what you're trying to say. It's like... Are they, are they going to have to keep fighting him until he runs out of life? Literally? Yo, you know, that's a great... That is an amazing point. That is so true. Because... That that line is actually super important because it's sure. it's that is uh that is something that can can really be borrowed and 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 implemented or applied to a lot of different situations. Absolutely. Right? You know, you have villains and just just enemies, you know, that will make their appearance, their debut in this show, in this series, this franchise, right? And they will, you know, they will be but so strong. Sometimes they'll be even stronger than what the main characters are in strength. And the constant in, in this particular series is that they always, they as in the main characters and whatnot, Goku, Vegeta, and what have you, in a lot of situations, they end up being the underdogs, right? And they have to become stronger or at least strong enough to then oppose said threat. Yeah. You know, it, it, I even I even like I even want to bring it, you know, to other characters like, you know, Gohan and even the in the kids Go Tanks because truth be told, had Go Tanks if Go Tanks was a little bit more mature, wasn't so stupid, you know, like it wasn't trying to fucking play around, volleyball, this and that, destructo, uh, th all that shit, galactic donuts, Dunkin' Don, fuck, all that shit, right? Screaming Take angry wombat. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> they, they literally could have defeated Boo right then and there. They had every bit of of uh, of strength and all that to do it, but didn't the, didn't Goku think that he could do it when uh, he was still when uh, Boo was still fat, and he was like, no, 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 I want the kids to try. Dude, I mean, that's it's almost as if like Toriyama was writing Goku to literally just be the send off guy. Like, he was like, Listen, I know I can, but I want you out. I want y'all to do it. Okay. And like, now here we are with the exact opposite. Right. Because Toriyama's at an age where he's just like, Yeah, you know, like, it is what it is. Like, this. <laughs> like, you and your kids and your fucking Dragon Ball, here you go. Yeah. He's like, oh, you, he's like, He's like, You guys really want this shit? All right, bet. Here you go. I'm going to make you guys fucking hate this <laughs> you know, speaking i was just gonna say speaking of like you know speaking of like kind of dumb shit right we've seen we've seen how super takes shit to you know it, it takes it out of this world it takes it to the next universe right yeah right to the next universe can we talk about how not progressive but regressive this chapter is because or not this chapter but this arc my bad how how bad it is because wishing for something as 
small as strongest in the universe what if you just got taken to universe six bot now what mm. I, it's yeah. i'm not saying that's the direction it's gonna take because it's definitely not but i'm just saying like you know it's strongest in the universe what if jiren pull up schooled Ooh, i was just gonna say that i was like oh like yeah wish yourself the strongest in the universe in universe seven pull up to 11 right exactly <laughs> you're, not, you're not getting a slushy i'll tell you that much <laughs> Rick and Jerry gotta hand that shit to you. Oh yeah, that's a good point. So, but yeah, to bring it to 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 bring it back though, like that really is the theme, you know. Like from time and time again, there's always gonna be a stronger person where they have to overcome it, and usually what ends up happening is there's a new form, and that new form is 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 the done deal. It's the seal to the deal. Um, but now it's like. Vegeta kind of just brought that to light. And he was just like making, putting everybody on, on that awareness check. Like, hey guys, just letting you know, like being the strongest is in most cases just in that moment. Exactly. That's why I feel, that's why I feel like it could be, he, he could be getting stronger. Cause you know, Vegeta was like, oh, thanks for unlocking my power. And Granola's like, well, I wished for more. So since you got stronger by default, I get stronger right he and hit that, him with and the that, no you yes so and that and see and that and that's gonna cause a very crazy ladder effect because because of that wish that wish needs to be fulfilled so yeah vegeta can be stronger than him at given seconds during the fight but as soon as that shit is you know pretty pretty much above a little bit of a threshold of that vegeta has definitely got his number granola's gonna start whipping out more strength and i'm pretty sure that 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 same concept will apply to everybody but just like you said it's gonna be until this dude just drops dead you know yeah. like yeah i i feel like i feel like another another poor wording in the wish because you know anytime anyone makes a wish in any show you know you gotta you gotta watch your words carefully right be careful what you wish yep. for a very common yep. statement and you know he said strongest in the universe we already went over why universe was a bad you know a bad choice but then strongest like come on now you could have said i don't know I, literally anything else but strongest like if someone pull up and they're smarter than you and you know vegeta mentioned like oh you definitely got this power this power is new to you isn't it because you don't know what the fuck to do with it right that's why you're getting beat and now i feel like he does know exactly how to use it because and basically the way to use it is simply well just keep fighting <laughs> yeah. keep fighting and if they do get stronger than you then you're lucky because now you're gonna get stronger than them for exactly. that time being so they have to find a way to stay weaker and outplay him right so hey you know you know you know what that sounds like it sounds a little familiar to me because what is another underlying theme that has been a constant not just in super but in 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 general with with these two freaking characters teamwork they literally could handle so many opponents from time and time again so much easier had they just teamed up and handled it together because what is better than one saying two that are what that is, le, that are like that but what is better than two saiyans broly you're an asshole <laughs> <laughs> got him <laughs> but i'm not wrong oh whatever i'll give it to you but no i was gonna say what's what's better than two saiyans one fused exactly exactly so it's like, like what if what if he's you know what if he's on his lifeline and they're just like oh you're the strongest bet watch this fusion ha all right now go ahead get stronger he can't hold it boom done killed himself he played himself <laughs> <laughs> but hold on i got a question now so the thing is when he made the wish he had to give up half his lifespan right yeah whatever but but that's whatever that may be we know niggas like hit live it like a thousand years <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah we don't we don't know the cerulean lifespan i mean i mean it, well hey we could we could kind of figure it out because you put cereal in milk that jungle gets soggy pretty quick yo you gotta uh, stop ah yo <laughs> i'm just trying to be creative here okay <laughs> but but as far as this guy goes i mean yeah we don't know exactly like how many like what the life expectancy of 
a cerulean is because saiyans clearly live for a long ass time like they have they keep their youthfulness like for a very long time like longer than humans so that's why i ask because you know i feel like so like i feel like the condition of the wish itself was just to simply cut his life in half and he get and the wish is granted and so any time that someone may surpass him for that moment and he does like that and then the wish like kind of you know reactivates itself to ensure that he is the strongest at that given point in time i don't think that that would would mean that his already cut in half lifespan would then be cut in half again i don't i don't think that would happen yeah i don't think it would be straight halves yeah i don't think so either because that would be that would be a very that'd be kind of dumb that's or that's some corrupted Dragon Ball type wishing. Yeah, like imagine having like clauses within the clauses. Like, oh, it's like, if, but <laughs> hey, but if but if they do serve, manage to get stronger than you, then you're gonna your shit gonna get cut in half again. Like, that's oof. That would be really unfortunate, and it would be super unfortunate if we had to if we all had to learn the hard way, where they're fighting and this guy is really just getting so strong that every time his lifespan really does deplete half and half and half and next thing you know it's like it's like the final blow is about to be given and boom he just drops dead that would suck i mean for him of course but <laughs> yeah that would definitely be pretty bad but knowing dragon ball run his pockets have that for happen. the special surprise inside <laughs> yeah do that and then they'll just bring him to earth and just wish him back and be like all right here you go you can go back to <laughs> yo they really would now. they really fucking would that's hella and then, dragon ball yeah you know like uh, i feel like oatmeal is gonna give some inspirational topo energy at some point during this too like no don't do it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so that's 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 essentially the chapter is there anything else that you wanted to touch on before i hit up these comments uh no nah, i kind of squeezed it in at the end there okay at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to hit up some of the comments that you guys have been submitting to us. And again, if you are listening via Apple Podcasts, Google, or Spotify, feel free to hit us up at fullpowerpod at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, you can put forth any ideas or um, comments, anything you want to add to what you heard in this episode and uh if there's time of course we'll definitely go over some of those in the following episode so definitely reach out fullpowerpod at gmail.com so this this uh this person here says i want to know what they will do with broly because they're not done with him Broly, he makes too much money and is too popular. I mean, I completely agree with that. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I got. I got nothing right now. We, you know, we gave our little wild predictions. Not even yeah. predictions, but you know, just ha-has. Right, right, right. I have no idea what they'll do. I think. So I think right now, since you know Broly got his whole his his own movie, right? And this was you know back. Sheesh, 2019 already that that john came out yeah uh i i feel like i feel like they're kind of like they're, they're giving this man a little bit of a cool down before they start using him again um oh no well hey i'm just saying because because you know we we're, we're currently in the second arc that is taking place after that nah, film no nah, wait I'm sorry to do this to you, but it, a thought came in my head and it just kind of played itself and I, I have to share it now. So okay. we're, we're, we're wondering, you know, we'll, <laughs> everybody in the Tournament of Power was wondering, where's Frieza? Well, now we're all here sitting like, where's Broly, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we know for a fact that he's on Vampa. He's doing some stuff, whatever. Right. How about... This next movie is a huge time skip, so we're not going to see him there. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be slice of life type, you know, focused on Pan and Piccolo and all that other stuff. So it's not it's not going to be about him. But what if it was? 
What if he's the unexpected character? <laughs> what if he's the unexpected character, you say? Yeah. Mm. Pull up, controlled as hell. Well. And then, you know, he and he and Goku can go uh, train Oob. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so, <That's> listen. <laughs> I'll never, th I'll, I'm not gonna ever freaking dismiss my man Broly, okay? <laughs> you already know, like, if, we're, if, if if there's if there's a good pitch, you know, I'll 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 hear it, I'll listen. I might hit that shit back, you know what I'm saying? Cause I ain't, I ain't, there's no strikes out here for my man Broly, okay? <laughs> so I'll say this, all right. So I'll humor it. So if he is that guy. If he is this, if he ends up being that the quote unquote unexpected character, I mean that's kind of that's very bold of them to yeah that to would be consider bold. him an unexpected character. <laughs> like <laughs> people are literally like, yo, where is this dude? <laughs> like, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I would love for him to be featured again in the next film because you don't know think at we're that gonna see him at all. Yeah, at that point, it would be three years, right? And granted, that's a pretty long time, you know, in between movies. That's, that's on some Avengers type stuff. Like, they had the main Avengers films literally every three years. Like, I was a freshman in college when the first Avengers came out. I graduated the second Avengers movie came out. And then three years after that, I'm still struggling in retail, and they finally put out freaking Infinity War, okay? So, that just goes to show you, like, you know, the time span of which, you know, films that, that you know, they, they could spread across. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I would honestly be very shocked if Broly played a pretty a significant role in that in that in that movie however you know he could fit the bill obviously and he could fit the role alongside oop because my whole thing was that you know if this is end of z this could definitely be one of those scenarios where it's like they do the tournament they have the flyaway part and then that's kind of where the, the, the actual movie takes place you know where goku's training oop and he's trying to let you know he he's trying to have him understand his power how to unlock it how to use it and then maybe goku has this, like this bright idea to bring oob to vampa or to bring broly to them nah he got to he got to let oob in the time chamber first just so he can get old enough so it's not child abuse <laughs> so it's not child listen listen that child abuse doesn't exist in the world of Dragon Ball because <laughs> you have you have you have our boy Vegeta beating the shit out of Kid Trunks in Dragon Ball Z when they was training in there, John. He did it to then. Gohan too. Yeah, man. Like, come on. Like, there's no such thing. They're Saiyans. They have they have freaking whooped their kid's ass right then and there. <laughs> so he ain't gotta worry about all that. But yeah, on on the topic of of that film and how. What they're gonna do with Broly, that's like the next best thing I could think of outside of just, you know, just randomly placing him in this arc. Because right now, it's just, it's, 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 it's kind of steered away from, I guess, any potential of him being brought up. Because, I mean, we have, we, we still have a lot of this arc left. I, I, I will admit. So, like, you know. I'm still, but I'm, I'm still not gonna hold my breath because, like, I'm very, I'm I, as, as, I, as much as I love Broly, I'm realistic. You guys know this, and I will put my realistic foot first before, you know, I, I start fanboying out here. Okay, so I hope that answered the question. So the next one, actually, of course, uh, does have to do with the movie because last week's episode we did talk about more of some of the movie ideas that could have happened so if you didn't uh if you, if you missed that episode definitely check it out um this person goes if they are giving oob and the forever kids <laughs> the main <laughs> spotlight something like dragon ball z legacy would be fire okay i'm, I'm maybe they're, they're referring to like that being the title or oh that could be like 
the next season, maybe? Like, instead of calling no, it Dragon Ball I Super? Think he's, I think he's uh, talking about the title. Okay. Um, and then, and then he goes on to say how the manga is doing stuff. They are really building up Oob's character. So I would love, I would love it to be honest. I feel like it's, it's a little bit of both. I feel like whether that Dragon Ball Z legacy would be the, would be the title of the movie or the title of like the next anime season. It's like I the game. Feel, you remember legacy of Goku? I, I was about to say that too. I was like, it's not, it definitely sounds like the game. Shout out. But, uh. I feel like that's that that would be dope because because think about it it's, it's it's one word it's very it's very simple and just like how people be like oh you're trying to watch some super and people like, yo you're trying to watch some legacy oh damn <laughs> uh, i like that it has a nice ring to it dbl no 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 because vegeta holding a, a bunch of those all right we don't need that yo oh my god it would be it'd be dbzl what <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> cause he cause he got the Z in there, so I as you know, kind of can't miss out on the Z. <laughs> but of course, you're probably gonna have some dumbasses out there that are still gonna be yo Dragon Ball Z Super Legacy Super Z Super D's nuts hero <laughs> Super D's right. So, but yeah, any 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 thoughts on that one or no? You're good. No, I'm good. All right, and the last one we have here. This person says, it would suck if Superhero is at the very end of Z. We'd be missing so much manga content. What do you think about that? We would be. Yeah, we would be. <laughs> Pre prepare yourself for it. Prepare yourself. Yeah, we literally. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's sad to say, but unfortunately. It's a, it's a disappointing reality we, we might be heading into. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's no guarantee that everything that we're seeing in the manga will be animated at all. And that is would definitely suck because I, for one, would love to see Ultra Ego. I would love to Yo. see that. <laughs> <laughs> and I would love to see the all the moral stuff. The moral, dude, the moral stuff. Yo, just the way you said it, I'm so sick. You said Ultra Ego. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, because I, I, cause we both don't like it. Like, I don't like the name. Nah, I you're like right. the form. I hope. I hope. I, I honestly. I going forward. I really do hope that they reconsider that name. I, I hope that's just a placeholder for the time being. Yeah. And I even hope, like. I hope the the grand the grand name master Weiss hears that and he's like, hmm, how about this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like it would be funny if Beerus was like, what? <laughs> Facts. He 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 would be like, why don't you just call it Ultra Destruction? And be like, bet I'll take it. It's better than Ultra Ego. I'll tell you that much. See how Boma likes that name. Right. She'd be like, you better ultra get your ass in the house. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, guys, that pretty much concludes this uh, this week's cha yeah, chapter. This week's episode. Last week, we didn't have one. So if you're looking for the one last week, fear not. We uh, couldn't get one out. I was very busy last week with uh, some things that I can possibly maybe reveal in the near future so we'll see about that um but yeah it definitely held up all the time from last week so um the last episode from this one is the one where we're talking about the end of the dragon ball superhero is the end of z right episode 23 so this is 24 right here kai do you have any last few bits or things you might want to say shout out or leave the folks at home with yeah, tell us what you think that new form should be called because it can't stay like this. Mm. Yes. Please let us know in the comments on YouTube. Email us, fullpowerpod at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts. Oh, and uh, I forgot to shout this out last week, but or last episode, I should say. Um, but we do have uh, some some incentives right so on my patreon page if you guys are interested in supporting the full power podcast a little bit more so um there are opportunities to listen to these episodes earlier before they hit youtube spotify google and what have you through the patreon so for five dollar backers and above you guys will have early access to these episodes all right so 
That's a as a as a little thank you for all of the support that you guys have been putting forward for us. We definitely appreciate that. And again, let us know in the comments, email fullpowerpod at gmail.com. All your thoughts, comments, concerns about this chapter and anything else that you guys might want to hear us talk about in future episodes of the Full Power Podcast. It's been your boy Ooch and the homie Kai, and we'll see y'all next time.